Okay, so in this video now, we're going to try and take our HTML pages a step further. And previously, we were just passing things directly into the browser. So these HTTP responses were just passing exactly what we wanted to display. We're going to use something built into Django called templates, where instead of having to write out a whole HTML page here, we can create HTML pages and send those over. And even by the end of this, we'll even pass in data. The very first thing we're going to want to do is create these templates. We have to create a few folders. So in our recipes app, we'll create a new folder called templates. Then in that folder, we'll create one more folder with the name of the app, so recipes. And this is just a Django convention, how it's built out of the box. You can update this setting, but we'll just follow the convention out of the box for now. So, and then under in this recipes folder is now where we can start adding files. So we'll add a home.html and we can add another file, the about.html. And we can add some HTML to this home page. So I have an Emmet extension where it lets me get some boilerplate HTML. You can find this in the GitHub repo if you want to copy this. Otherwise, the Emmet extension is a great extension. And so we'll just add some text here, an H1, and we'll say recipes app home. Okay, so we saved that. So now we have this template, but we need to tell the view to return it when somebody goes to this route and this function gets fired. So right now we were using the HTTP response, but Django also has this shortcut that they auto import called render. So we'll use this. So instead of returning HTTP response, we'll return render. And you can see that it takes three things. It takes the request, the template name, and then context. So we'll touch on context in a second, but first we just pass it in the request request object and then the template name and so the convention here is recipes dash and then the name of the template that we want to use and we can go ahead and get rid of this HTTP response statement here so now we're returning this render function which takes a request and then it will point to our template that we want and it's in the recipes folder and then it's the home.html file right here. So if we wanted to test this out, we can open up, we can start the server, python manage.py run server, this localhost port 8000. We should see recipes app home. Perfect. So now that we see that, we can go ahead and do that for the about page as well. So I'll just, you can copy it over from the home page or just create it. I'll say about recipes app like that. And then we also need to connect up the view so that it returns the template. So I'll just duplicate that. You can shift alt down arrow and then holding alt and up and down on the arrow keys moves, moves lines. Um, so we can get rid of that and return this render it takes the request but this time we want to use the about template. So we'll update that and save that. The server's already running, so it auto reloads. So now we just need to go into the document and refresh it. And we can just refresh it by going to the about route. And now it says about recipes app. So that's awesome. So now we're not just returning lines of code here. We're actually returning templates. We want to add some data to these pages, right? Because they're typically not going to be static. They'll have some data that's coming in. So just above the functions in this file, I'm going to create a list of objects. And we'll just say the first one, this will just be the author of the recipe. I'll just put Dom. Then we'll put the title of the recipe. And we'll put uh, meatball sub. We'll put the directions for how to make it. We'll just say um, 
combine all ingredients. This is just dummy data, so. And then we'll say date posted. And we will say today's date, which I think is the 19th. Um, okay, and then let me just format this really quickly. Um, like this. And then I'll duplicate this so we get a few more. more pieces and we'll say this is just uh, we'll say turkey sub May 16th and a uh, ham and cheese okay so it's just just dummy data so it doesn't really matter but now there's this th there's that third argument that we could pass to this render function so first we'll create a variable called context it's a dictionary and set its recipes property to recipes data that's up here. This is what we call this here recipes. So it'll create this dictionary and then we can pass that in. And now when this page gets rendered, it passes in this data. We'll have access to this recipes, this recipes uh, object. So how do we actually work with this data? Well, inside of the template, so if we go back to the home.html, now it's we have access to this data in here. And the templating language, uh, it's Django's, it's similar to Jinja 2, if you're familiar with that at all, but it allows you to do some logic. So for instance, with a curly bracket and, parent, and uh, percentage, you can write for loops. So for example, for recipe in recipes. So recipes was the data we passed in. And whenever you open up a loop in this templating language you need to close it so we say n4 and now within this loop we'll have access to each recipe and we could do whatever we want with them so we could say uh, h1 and then to access the actual data itself we use double curlies so like this and we could say recipe dot I think title was one of them we could say open up a p tag and do recipe dot author uh, and recipe dot um, date it was let me just check what we called it date posted recipe dot date posted and then we can have another paragraph tag that is the recipe dot directions I believe it's called and so there, so now if we, so the server's still running, so now if we go back to our page and go back to the home page, you can see that now we get the list of all those recipes. So obviously we hard coded this, but you can do more complex things that we'll do in the future with dynamic data and things like that from, the, from a database um, or, or even external sources. So, um, but this is very cool. Now we are able to pass information in. So next thing we're gonna do is let's add some logic to the title here so let's say we have titles for each page but if we don't have a title then we'll just give it a generic one so to do this we'll use an if statement so if title and then we always have to close them close these blocks so we'll say and if and then in here we could say title um, and then put an else So if there is a title, then we can just display title. If there is no title, then we can just say recipes app. And so we can copy this and do the same thing in this about page. So we just paste it over the current title. And now if we go back into our view, and for this about function, you can also just hard code context to be passed in. So we could say title, and we could give it a title of about us page. And so now, if we go and view the page, we can see that the home page has this title recipes app. And if we go to slash about, it has the about us page. So that's the conditional 
logic that you can do within a template. And now, what if we wanted, what if all, these pages are gonna share a lot of similar things. So what if we wanted to change one thing? Well, we'd have to change them on every template and that would be kind of annoying. So Django gives you something called template inheritance. So to do this, we'll make a new template that contains all the similarities between pages. So things like navigation, um, these, this head, even the body section, and then we'll inherit it and only include the, the information that's different page to page. So we'll do that by in the recipes directory, creating a new file called base.html. And now if we look at our home and about, we can see that a lot of the code is the same, basically everything besides what's in inside of the body. So we can just grab this home page, copy that, and add it to our base.html, and delete what's inside of the body, and add block content. So that's basically saying create a block called content. And then whenever you do something that opens, you have to end it. So then we'll say end block. You could specify content, but you don't have to. So now we can go back to the home page and inherit and say that it extends recipes slash base that HTML. So that's saying that it extends that other file, that base base that HTML file, and then we'll delete everything but what we want to pass in. And so this is all already in that base file. So this is basically what we want to pass in. So we'll say right here, we'll say block content. And then down here, end block content. And sometimes I get some weird formatting. So just to, I'm just going to put a comment here just so that it keeps the formatting like this. And so now you could see that we have it using this base file. And if we go back to the browser and we go back to the home page, everything should still look the same. Everything looks the same. And now we can update the about page. So if we go into about, we can do the same thing. We can say up here, extends recipes slash base.html. And then I'm just gonna add a comment because sometimes I get that weird formatting. And then we'll take out everything that isn't in the base. And we'll say block content. And then take out the bottom portion that's not in the base and end block. You can keep it like this, this would work, but just specifying which block you're ending helps so you can keep track. So we'll do that. And then if we go over to, back to the web page and go to slash about, if I can type, then you can see that that's also also hasn't changed. So that's inheritance, inheriting templates, and that's a great way which we will dive deeper into, into doing things like styling and navigation and things that are consistent across pages. And we've also now, instead of just returning some data specifically from this view, we've created the templates and also passed data in that the templates can use. So that's where we're at for now. And then next we'll look at adding styles and navigation and seeing the more interface come together. So if, if you've enjoyed this episode, then be sure to like and subscribe so that you get notified when the next one comes out and leave a comment uh, if this is helpful. It motivates me to continue to make these, uh, but otherwise I'll see you in the next video.